all throughout the southeastern United States in urban and agricultural areas, a giant invasive cricket with hand-like front legs is taking over and is leaving behind a path of destruction everywhere it expands its range. However, there is actually one native species to this region that is actually beneficial to the environment. However, it is being outcompeted by the invasives and I have yet to find it until... It's a tiny mole cricket? More cricket. Come here. Come here. Come here. You a tiny more cricket? Um. Oh my. No way. That's a northern. Oh my goodness, I've never seen a northern more cricket. <laughs> All right, children. This right here is something I've been looking for for years. This is the northern mole cricket, Florida's only native mole cricket species out of quite a few mole cricket species. Now you might be wondering, what in the world is a mole cricket? Well, it is actually a true cricket. These things are pretty closely related to your average like house crickets, field crickets, green trigs, you know, your average crickets like that. But these have something special. Instead of being able to jump long distances and living on the top of the ground or in trees or in bushes, these things live underground and build holes, little burrows in the ground, which is where they get the name mole cricket from. Now, even crazier where they get the name mole cricket from is the fact that they not only dig like moles, they also look like moles. They have this kind of cute face with these two big black beady eyes, but even weirder, they have hands. You heard me right. This is a cricket with hands and almost fingers too. Their front two legs are very enlarged and kind of paddle shaped at the end with these spikes that almost look like fingers. Now they're not movable like fingers, but just like a mole would, they use these two big front hands to dig into the ground and they are extremely fast diggers. When I release this guy, you will see just how fast it can dig. Now taxonomically, Mole crickets are technically the closest living relatives to the ant crickets, which unlike this absolutely massive cricket right here, this is probably one of the largest crickets I've ever seen. Ant crickets are the smallest crickets in the world. So it's kind of funny that they're closely related, but they both have a relatively similar plan in that their back legs, instead of being very, very large for jumping, are quite small. And honestly, both mole crickets and ant crickets spend most of their time walking and running on the ground and also living underneath the ground than they do jumping. <laughs> like I said, this is the northern mole cricket, Florida's only native mole cricket species. Now you might be wondering, how can I tell it isn't one of the many invasives like the tawny mole cricket, the southern mole cricket, and the lesser short winged mole cricket? Now, those species, except for the lesser short winged mole cricket, will have longer wings. But more importantly, you can see those cerci at the end of the abdomen those two long appendages. Northern mole crickets have much longer cerci than any of Florida's other mole cricket species, as well as a more elongated and dark overall appearance, with the head and thorax being very elongated and narrow, almost having more of a cylindrical look with a relatively small head, whereas the other species in Florida will have a larger head, a more thick body, and shorter cerci. Florida's invasive mole crickets are actually posing a really big problem in urban areas and agricultural areas because they're building way more burrows into the soil than these native mole crickets could ever dream of doing just by themselves. So the three other species of invasive mole cricket are doing much more damage than just the one native one was doing before. So to combat these invasive mole crickets, a species of wasp, a specialist species of wasp called Laura bicolor has been introduced into Florida as a biological combat to especially the tawny mole cricket, but especially the invasive members of the genus Neoscapteriscus. Now this native mole cricket is not in the Neoscapteriscus, it's in its own genus separate from the other ones. So likely that specialist wasp would not be able to target this native species, which is not posing a threat to urban and agricultural areas like the invasives are. This northern mole cricket is unusually for a mole cricket just sitting nice and still on my hand. But if I were just to push it, it's gonna go crazy. And trust me, these things move very strangely. Arguably 
the way they moved is weirder than how they look or their very unusual biology. So let's take a look at how this thing walks around. As you can see, even in my hands, this mole cricket's first instinct is to dig downwards. And what it's doing to do this is using its front two hand-like legs to push my fingers apart. The force you feel in between the fingers when the mole cricket is pushing them apart is actually quite impressive. And you can really see how they're able to dig through even relatively tough soils. And you can see when they're not underground and stressed out, their movements are quite frantic. But once they calm down, they usually stop moving. I just thought this shot was way too cute to not include in the video. Now you see wings on this mole cricket right here, but actually this species, the northern mole cricket, has wings even as full-grown adults like this one that are too small to be able to use for flight. However, the wings do have one useful purpose. Like most other crickets, the males produce noises. However, if you hear a mole cricket, it is actually because it is calling underneath the ground. The males make their noises from inside their burrows. So their noises almost always sound muted and they're always coming from underneath the ground. The females, on the other hand, while they cannot call, lay their eggs in their burrows in a special chamber that they make underground. Now I'm actually not sure whether this mole cricket right here is a male or a female. That is because, unlike in most other crickets, the males and females are very hard to tell apart. Mole cricket females do not have the long exposed ovipositor that your average cricket would because they don't need to insert their eggs into a deep substrate, instead just laying them directly underground. Besides breeding, their burrows also serve the purpose of being able to hide from predators and also to find food. These things are herbivorous. They'll be eating plant matter that occurs underground. And actually, the nymphs of this specific species right here have been known to specialize on eating only the roots of plants. However, as they mature, they diversify their options. Even though this northern mole cricket right here is an herbivore, pretty much strictly, some other mole cricket species, especially the southern mole cricket, have been known to also eat small insects. Mole crickets are mostly nocturnal, and it was extremely strange just seeing that in open daylight just running across the street, basically. I'm so happy to number one, finally be featuring a mole cricket on this channel, something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And two, finally be finding Florida's only native mole cricket species, the northern mole cricket. But unfortunately, we gotta let this guy go. These serve a very important purpose in our ecosystems here in South Florida, and I'm going to release it into the leaf litter. I'm not gonna put it back on the road. I don't want this thing getting run over. So I've moved it to a nearby spot. I'm gonna release it into that leaf litter so we can watch just how quickly these things can burrow back underground. All right, little guy, it's fun working with you. Let's take a look at how you dig. Just like that, it's gone. Can't even see it. 